Anytime we have more than one object, we have a system of objects. Let's see how to deal with those. So a system of objects is more than one object that are connected or somehow in contact. They have to be affecting each other. We're not just going to have a couple of random objects not affecting each other. They're not going to interact with the calculations at all. So uh, here we have some examples of systems where we have two blocks connected by a string that's going over a pulley. Uh, it doesn't have to be going over a pulley. You could have two blocks connected by a string, both of them on a horizontal surface. Uh, but these are just some standard examples of systems because both blocks affect each other. Uh, what happens to one affects what happens to the other. So the rules for dealing with systems of objects. First step, draw a free body diagram for each object. You can't just draw one free body diagram. You have to draw a free body diagram for each object. And then for each object, you're going to have to resolve the forces at angles into their x and y components. Uh, this could be several forces, it could be no forces. Uh, just resolve them all into x and y components. Keep in mind that the direction of acceleration is the positive direction, but because we have multiple objects that may be moving different directions, perhaps uh, one object is moving horizontally and the other one's moving vertically, uh, the direction of acceleration may be different. That doesn't matter the direction of acceleration for that object is the positive direction for that object. Next, you have to write your, for, your net force equations for the x and y directions for each object. So if you have two objects, you're going to have for each object an x and y net force equation. So you'll have a total of four net force equations. Once you have the net force equations, then you can solve your problem. Uh, keep in mind some tips that the connected objects have the same acceleration. They're connected. They're going to be accelerating at the same rate. And also ropes have the same tension on each side. Unless the pulley has mass, which we'll do in AP physics. Um, but uh, so ropes have the same tension on each side. Connected objects have the same acceleration. You can use that in your equations to do substitution or setting two equations equal to each other. Those are very useful uh, tools to have. So let's look at a simple system. Here we have what's called an Atwood machine. We have two masses that are different, uh, connected by a rope going over a pulley. Now the heavier mass, M2, is going to be the one that pulls the system down its direction. So it's going to be accelerating downward. M1 is going to be accelerating upward. So let's look at M1. We have uh, tension going up m1g going down, the force of gravity. Now acceleration's up, so tension's going to be our positive force. So our net force equation would be t minus m1g equals m1a. Make sure you put that m1 and not just m because we do have two different masses and it could get confusing. So that's our net force equation for m1. Let's look over at m2. Now since down is the direction of acceleration on m2, that means down is the positive direction for this equation. So we're going to say m2g is positive, minus t equals m2a. Again, keep the m2, uh, don't just write m. But now when we're solving, the t's are the same and the a's are the same. So we could use that to uh, solve our problem. A lot of times when you're solving these problems, you're going to have to use uh, your algebra tools for two equations with two unknowns. Oftentimes, the tension and the acceleration are both unknown, and you're trying to find one or both of them. So brush up on your algebra for solving two equations with two unknowns, and uh, then you got it made.